Welcome to the November public meeting of the Gender Equity Commission. We're awfully glad you're with us if you're joining us from the public. Um, we are live streaming today. We're also recording today. And of course, as always, we will make the recordings and the minutes of today's meeting available on the city website. Um, we're awfully glad you're with us. If you would like to submit any testimony or suggestions or if you have questions, please feel free to email us. That's probably the easiest way to get a hold of us right now. The email address is genderequity at pittsburghpa.gov. And I'll say that again, genderequity at pittsburghpa.gov. And we would love to hear from you. Uh, we're really committed to being uh, a part of this community and hearing from the community. Um, to get us started, I'm gonna go ahead and do roll call. Again, just reminding commissioners, uh, we are now live and recording. So let's see who is with us. Uh, uh, Take our quick roll call here. Commissioner Coffey. Present. Commissioner Fogarty. Present. Commissioner Gross. <laughs> I saw you. She's here. Commissioner Hall. Is present. Commissioner Hansen. Here. Is here. <laughs> you know, everybody's trying to unmute. <laughs> it does help when you're doing the minutes later to know who's here. Uh, Commissioner Higginbotham. Here. Here. Commissioner Corval. Here. Commissioner Manuel. Present. Commissioner Nietrauer. Here. Commissioner Overton. Here. Commissioner Schultz. Have you seen Sarah? Do you not think Sarah's with us? Commissioner Strelick. Here. Commissioner Walker. We've not seen her either. And Commissioner Williams. Here. Always last but never least. Thank you, Rick. Awesome. All right. <laughs> All right. Good to see everybody. Um, we generally start with the reading of any submitted public testimony. Anu, do we have anything from last month? Anything we need to share? No, we're, we're uh, fine right now. Not at this. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, then we've got minutes to approve from both September and October. Thank you so much to our interim secretary. Allison has really been, um, wrangling all these systems that we just spent an hour talking about and getting up to speed and figuring all of this out. So thank you, thank you so much, Allison. Uh, in the middle of everything as we've just been talking about, you've really taken a lot on your shoulders. Uh, so those meeting minutes, this for both September and October are in the folder. Are there any changes, updates, corrections for either September or October if we could just vote to approve them both together? I'm looking, I see no. Nobody waving their hand wildly. Okay, no corrections. Uh, can I have a motion please to approve those minutes? This is Janet, I make a motion to approve the minutes for September and October. Thank you, Janet. We have a second. See, this is that Robert's rules we were just talking about. Lee is seconding and all in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. 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 We'll raise a hand, thank you. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, great. We've got approved minutes for both September and October. Again, Allison, thank you so much. We're gonna move on quickly to our administrative updates and standing committees. Um, Anu, the floor is yours for your executive director report. So, uh... Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure I unmuted myself. Um, so uh, today we had the launch of the appointments project, diversifying boards, authorities, and goal commissions of city government. And uh, we know representation matters and we want women's leadership. So um, I will send out uh, the website, which is united-we.org. Uh, slash events and it lists the trainings that'll happen December 7th and January 13th um, ways of informing and starting to um, really uh, connect with women gender diverse people especially women of color in our city 
um, to make sure that they are aware of opportunities um, to take these leadership roles. So I will send that out to all of you. Uh, it'll go out in the next newsletter, uh, but just uh, another opportunity for us to work with the Office of Equity as Director Manuel was just encouraging us to do um, in making systematic change. Tomorrow is the exciting launch you'll hear about from the committee, the Workforce Equity Committee that has been doing really, really amazing work. Uh, so two press conferences in two days for me, um, which uh, is easier than in person, I guess. But uh, that is really exciting and there is, um, the big news uh, that is it's under construction, but we have a new tab on our webpage. And I highly encourage commissioners and everyone else in our city to go to our webpage, which is pittsburghpa.gov slash GEC, uh, and check out the Workforce Equity tab. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm not the best designer in the world, but there's a lot of information, including our chair um, has shared with, uh, on our education resources, some definitions. So, you know, the, there's a lot on the website um, that I think is, is interesting. And this is just the newest measure. And I just wanna confirm something that some of the new commissioners have been saying. Um, this commission has done amazing amounts of work in just a few years. And I thank you all, especially those of you who don't work for city government and our volunteers, uh, because what we're seeing now is coming to fruition um, that it was uh, for some people in our city, although uh, not many of the most vulnerable um, to oppressive systems, um, our report, PIJ report from September, 2019, that was our, our taking stock and getting current data. And now we're seeing um, come into action some of our suggested policy recommendations for changing things. So I hope next year we'll be able to do some measuring and say, here's how we've made a difference. Um, and so thank you all. I think that's it for uh, my executive director report this month. Thank you, Anu. Any questions for our executive director? Sarah. Um, Anu, I meant to ask you this. Um, we can share the link for our colleagues to join us and view the uh, live stream on Facebook tomorrow. Is that, that's correct? And all of um, anybody who's watching right now, like we can send out the link for them to tune in tomorrow. Is that correct? Uh, so I will check. I've been so busy working on the Zoom links for today. Um, which ended right before I got here. So right. <laughs> I will check and I will make sure um, there will be a press conference, a press release, excuse me, going out from the mayor's office that'll have that information, but I'll make sure to get uh, a link to all the commissioners. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Thanks, Anu. Any other questions for Anu? Um, Next in the standing committees is your executive committee. Um, as you all just heard in our work session together, the executive committee was working um, not only on setting the agenda for today, but having this conversation about how we might want to work together and did make some recommendations, which we've now had a, a quick chance to have a conversation about around consent agenda and Martha's rules and some of our meeting time issues. So. We can put that into the record in the minutes um, that that conversation happened. And of course, we were working with our Leadership Development and Governance Committee. Thank you, Sabrina and Lee and all the folks on that committee for all that hard work. Um, that really took up the bulk of the Executive Committee's time this month. Uh, no other major pressing issues I'm happy to report. Uh, the Treasurer is next. Back to you, Sarah. Right. Um, and this will be very brief. There's nothing to report. <laughs> no new updates at this time, uh, but we will continue to monitor and, and update as, as information becomes available. Thank you. Now we can all see why we want to put all of this into a consent agenda. Um, governance and leadership development. Speaking of, <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to you, Sabrina. That was like a big softball over to me. Thank you. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, so as you said, Jesse, we had some um, really good and robust conversation during our working meeting, and based on that conversation, um, we wanted, I wanted to um, make a motion that we move, that the commission um, begins to use a consent agenda, um, beginning with the month of December 2020, um, where we would 
place in their consent agenda things that um, would easily be agreed upon um, as a whole. And um, we would that would be um, per the executive committee as the agenda is set each month. So if someone would be willing to second that motion. This is Janet, I'm, I second that motion. Okay. Great, we have a motion on the floor. Uh, is there any discussion, questions? The motion is to move to a consent agenda, which the group has had a chance to discuss. Thank you so much again for that conversation. Then let's move it to a vote. All those in favor of uh, beginning to use a consent agenda format for our meetings beginning next month, please say aye. 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 Any nays? or abstentions. All right, seeing none, that passes. We will begin with a consent agenda starting at our December meeting. Um, Wonderful, and thank you to Lee for bringing that forward as a new option for our commission. We very much appreciate it. Um, okay, and then the second um, issue I wanted to bring before the commission is the idea of making a change to the bylaws. Um, presently, we use um, Per the bylaws Robert's rules of order um, and we also had a great discussion about uh, alternate top uh, alternate option of Martha's rules of order um, and so in order to make a change to the bylaws we would need to announce it um, after this meeting and then we would vote on it in December so um, what I'm asking the Commission to do is um, consider a change from Robert's rules of order in the bylaws to Martha's rules of order um, we've been provided with materials about that particular um, uh, meeting method, and um, certainly you can refer back to that if you have any questions in the meantime, but could we vote on that in December? And, um, and thank you, Jesse, for bringing that to our attention as a, as a new uh, technique for our meetings. Lee, did you have something? Yeah, I, I just wondered, do, uh, because we may make, uh, different decisions along the way if something different comes up or something better, do we have to have that in our bylaws? Can we vote to remove Robert's rules, but say we will be using some kind of parliamentary procedure, but do we have to name it? No, I think you're right. We don't have to name it. We could just refer the, um, as the commission decides, right? Um, yeah. So then we don't have to change it again if we change. Yeah. Does anyone have any objection to just making it reference a parliamentary method? No, no objection. Okay. All right, then I modify my request to change the bylaws. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that it would just remain as referencing a parliamentary method and then we can, as a commission, agree to use Martha's rules of order. Um, okay. <laughs> and, and then the last thing is that I would like to make a request um, if necessary, per a motion that we um, use our meeting time in the month of December to uh, have a one hour working meeting again, and then a one hour public meeting, um, and in the working meeting to continue to have a conversation about communication and also to go back to review that document about the roles of the commissioner, um, which we weren't able to get to today. So um, if a motion is necessary, I so move. I don't think no, those are the I, I think having had that discussion, um, it, since we, we're not required to have a two hour meeting, there's there's no nothing mm -hmm. in the bylaws or in the ordinance that requires us to have a meeting of any given length. So I think we're, we're free to, uh, if mm. we collectively Great. choose and we uh, had that conversation, so. Wonderful. It was my reading of that, yes. And we had, we had lots of thumbs up. I really appreciate the, the move to the new meeting format. Three big changes. Thank you. That, yep, that would be the end of my report. Thank you. <laughs> because you did so much work in committee. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Super appreciate all that effort um, and everybody's collective effort on that. Actually, that's not it. I have one other thing. Just as a reminder, I apologize. I have been in touch with everyone about um, this is my role as nominating chair, which falls under my role is chair of the governance and leadership committee about the executive committee and and or about remaining in your position as a chair if you are currently there or if you are interested in becoming a chair of a committee and finally about those who um, want to be reappointed to the commission if their term is ending so I have heard back from many of you but if there's something you are just 
wanting to communicate with me, hint, hint, um, please don't hesitate to call me or send me an email. Um, I'd love to hear from everyone. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Sabrina, so much for working on getting us a, a slate that is a big job every year. And I appreciate everybody's willingness to consider running for these offices. It's really um, terrific to have your leadership, collective leadership on the executive committee. So thank you, thank you. All right, if there are no other further questions for our leadership development and governance committee, which has been batting it out of the park, planning retreats and everything else, um, with great appreciation, we'll move on to Morgan. Our Equity Action Planning Committee is next. Hello, hello everyone. Um, I kind of feel like a broken record at this point, uh, reiterating our newly invigorated Equity Action Planning Committee. Um, but we had a great discussion during our last committee meeting about our order of operations. And um, the first order of business is to um, start an action plan development for each city department. And we have the opportunity to partner with CMU to do a gendered analysis um, with one or two city departments of our choice. Um, and then this analysis will serve as a model for other city departments. And of course, every department is different. They operate differently, but we at least have an idea of how to go about the business. Um, so we've talked about it and we considered um, permits, licenses and inspections, parks and rec and or city planning because these departments have not only um, a robust interface within the city, but also externally with um, constituents and community, community members. And I know that a huge focus for us as we're pivoting forward and thinking about, um, you know, how we stand as a commission is, you know, what role do we play with community members? So if there's any other departmental suggestions you all have, that's what we, thought of. Um, Jesse, I don't know if this is the time to make a motion for CMU to conduct the analysis. Um, yeah, but we'll, we will need to do that and make sure that we approve that so that Anu can make the request in the mayor's office. Yeah. Um, so with that said, um, I would like to make a motion for us to vote on CMU to pilot a gendered analysis of city departments. I second it. We have a second in motion. Are, uh, is, are there questions or discussion from the floor? Janet. Hi, Morgan. Uh, I, just a few questions. Is there like an outline of what they are going to be analyzing? Uh, what the time frame is? Uh, what the outline actually is that is able to be shared with us as the commissioners? Mm -hmm. So um, I have the proposal, I have the proposal that they sent and it would most likely start in the spring of next year. Um, and Jesse, if I'm missing any nitty gritty bits, let me know, but um, that's generally the, the gist of it. Yes, and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions about what the group has planned to do. There's a group of PhD students, faculty, and they're going to recruit additional PhD, PhD students um, to work with us. And the idea, as Morgan was just saying, is that they would actually do a pilot with one or two, preferably at least two departments. And what we would get, the outcome, the, um, what we will get at the end is a method that we can then use for applying to additional um, department analyses. So this would really help us with our future work. Um, and so that's the goal. And it's a group of folks who actually have expertise in looking at gender equity and data analysis. So it's an interesting, and pretty on point research team. So have they given us a general idea of, of what they're going to be inquiring of, what yeah. data they're gonna be collecting? I'm, I'm just curious. Yeah. Yeah, they gave us a little like two and a half page write up. Um, and I thought that that had gone out, but I'm now I was looking at the packet and I see it's not in there. It's not. We have, little, we have like a little two and a half page write up that they submitted. Um, that is an abstract of what they were proposing to do. The committee has looked at that, the committee approved it. Um, that's what the committee has brought to all of you today. Right, is there a way before we vote that we have the opportunity to review that prior to voting? Mm -hmm. I have some privileges. I agree. 
I'm yeah. not trying to prolong. Okay, somebody just said something and I couldn't hear. I can't drop but, anything into a chat, unfortunately. Do I have screen sharing okay. privileges? Oh, like there you go. Me. Can you screen share, Morgan? Yeah, let me do that. That's perfect. That's the way to do it. I'm like, oh, we don't have chat, but we have screen share. Yay. <laughs> Everyone see. Okay, so here's the research team. You may see a familiar name. <laughs> Can you go back up to the research team? Yeah, go back to the research team. Yeah. I'm on there because I'm advising oh, who's them. Jesse Ramey. <laughs> I was advising them, so they put me on there. Okay. Amanda, I see your hand. So this sounds very exciting. I, I would like to make a request um, that we have a chance to sit with this mm -hmm. and make it a priority for December, just because we didn't. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Before the meeting. I agree too. Because this yeah. is a really, this is a really important and a really exciting opportunity for us. Mm -hmm. And want to make sure that the commission has the chance to really sit with it. and then if we have any yeah, questions, I agree. Yeah, especially because you know Janet being the director of HR hasn't had a chance to look at yeah, it. right but I mean that this is awesome and I want to make sure that the commission has a chance to give it its full attention that it deserves because it sounds like uh, Morgan your committee has been doing a lot of really great work but I, I don't I want to give it the respect it deserves yeah, yeah. And, yeah, that's, second, yeah. and, and that's why I was saying if we could have that opportunity, I wasn't trying to hold up any progress, but I'd rather take the opportunity for us to take mm -hmm. a step back, review it in its full, so we can have an mm -hmm. understanding before we vote. Uh, it's mm -hmm. 2020, so it, we got to get used to things kind of being held back. But no, this that absolutely makes sense. I can make sure everyone has this copy um, with them so that we can marinate with this and make sure that we do really intentional work instead of just, you know, rushing things along. Um, again, the proposed area like the date was next spring. So we have plenty of time to really mm -hmm. um, think about what departments we might want to suggest to CMU. Um, but I just wanted to bring to your all of your attention what um, our potential opportunity is. Good. I see Deb's hand and Sharon's hand. And then I, I want to check in with the new about a timing issue before we commit to anything. Deb? Go ahead and then Sharon. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I sit on this committee and I want to take some ownership that I, you, most of the commissioners who've been around for a long time have heard me give the speech about like, we should be analyzing the city budget for its gendered impacts, you know, our snowplow sexist, our sidewalk sexist, and you'll see some of that language in here, right? And so what Morgan was talking about like the outwardly facing impact of the actions that some of our departments take. So less about personnel and more about the, the data that is already public and so, but really hasn't been analyzed with a gendered lens, like the permit licenses and inspection data kind of already sits at the Western Pennsylvania Regional Data Center. And I get complaints, this is what I'm gonna share. As a councilwoman, I, have complaints from women-owned small businesses that they feel that the system is unfair. Um, and so at, the, at a kind of the way it's structured, right? So if you're a big developer or a big franchise business, I don't know what to, you know, let's say Chi Chi's. I don't even think Chi Chi's exists anymore, right? You've got your own architects, you've got your attorneys, you get all this stuff. Um, and so you can make it, you can navigate through all of the, you know, maybe not a reasonable um, looking, appearing um, hoops that are city government hoops for permitting and inspections and licensing and zoning and planning and all that kind of stuff. But you go right through when you've got lots of uh, architects and attorneys and you don't when you're a small business. It applies to minority businesses, it applies to women-owned businesses, our small businesses. And yet we as a city, I as a, as a council person, 
will constantly be talking about how incredibly important and how much we value and how we're trying to support small businesses. And so are we doing what we're saying? Um, and can we look at that data and ask those questions and will that data reveal those questions for you? And if we have it and we can prove it, what do we, can we do something about it? Um, mm -hmm. And so you, you've heard me talk about this in a lot of, a lot of ways. So I was really happy that Jesse was able to find some practitioners mm -hmm. who had the skill sets it looks like that mm -hmm. um, can, uh, you know, fill that kind of thing. So I was pushing for that in this committee and it looks like this is an opportunity to at least do some of that work. But I also support all of us kind of chewing on it a little more and thinking about, um, you know, where we want to get started. That's all. Yeah. Thanks, Deb. Yeah. So to be very clear, this was not looking at uh, new data sets, but existing data sets for now uh, and not, not the HR data. Uh, Sharon, you had your hand up, I saw. Go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, um, it might also be um, helpful to think about how that work overlaps with the um, gender mm -hmm. analysis committee. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that uh, um, that would be really, really helpful to do um, and to also be able to give feedback on you know, on that and the, and the overlap. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, Morgan, maybe we can connect, um, you know, uh, a little later, but also, but also like how, how it helps to shape the gender analysis, you know, after they're done with, with that work. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the overlap, I think, I think being able to, you know, um, uncover the overlap would be very, very helpful for, for us. Mm hmm yeah. New, can I check in with you quickly? And Amanda, I do see your hand. Um, I'm just curious about our timeline and with the city, since this is going to require an MOU or some kind of agreement, you know, with with um, CMU. And I know they are launching their spring semester in February because of COVID. They've been pushed back, so I I think we've got a little bit of extra planning time. But can you give us a sense, Anu, of any understanding you have in terms of how long it might take? Um, you know, if we wait till December to have another discussion about this, and then we ask the city to look into an MOU, are we going to be pushing up into the holidays? Or... Probably, but I think due diligence is important. So I guess mm -hmm. I, it just seems like a necessary thing. Um, I can certainly do everything I can. MOUs are much easier than contracts with budgets. <laughs> um, and so I, um, I think if it, you know, and, and perhaps this is a time when it's, if it seems important enough to get it on um, their semester schedule to do a vote by email, uh, which is something you have used before. Um, and I, I'll put it, um, I've been waiting for a more, I've been waiting for the approval, but we've only um, had sort of bits and pieces. So I am looking for some more detail on what to put in it, you know, in an MMU, what it would look like. Um, so, so getting those pieces together will expedite the process and I'll do my best to, to get it through as quickly as I can. Uh, but I absolutely encourage you all to discuss it um, until you feel confident um, because it's also going to take commissioners working with this team um, along with me. So something to think about. Yeah, thank you, Anu. Amanda? I just had one more question about, um, did the team, uh, like how did, how was the team formed? Did they approach the GEC or also the makeup of the team? Um, you know, demographic makeup, who, who is leading it, what their expertise is in terms of intersectional gender analysis? Um, because we do want to make sure that, you know, I mean, these are, I think it would be really great for that information to be included because we also want to make sure that we avoid any questions from anybody, even if there's no cost involved in this. We, we want to make sure that we're able to answer any questions concerning, you know, um, anything that has to do with equity with anyone doing this kind of work with the city that we made sure that we're very transparent with all of this. Again, this is such an exciting opportunity. I would hate for <laughs> any small thing like this or small, but anything like this to, to um, impact that. Um, so if that can be included, like the process of, of how we found them and, and who they are, their background, demographic information, et cetera. Yeah, I, and I'd be very happy to 
note some of that in the document, but I can answer some of that right now if you want to hear the, the quick how we found them. Um, one of the members of that team is married to me. And in conversations with him, he said, hey, have you heard about my fabulous colleague who does menstrual equity? That's Sarah Fox. Um, you are welcome to look up some of her work. It really dovetails beautifully with some of the menstrual equity work that this committee's done. And she's looked nationally at what holds up menstrual equity work in data analysis um, in some governmental systems. She has a brand new PhD student named Bonnie Fox, who actually has done work with the city already, has been engaged. Um, Janet may in fact know her. I'll have to find out which department she was in. Um, she's just finished up her master's work in uh, public management at CMU and is starting in the PhD program and is interested again in uh, sort of these data discrimination and data equity kinds of issues. Um, so when I heard about them, I asked for a meeting and I said, would you be interested in talking to me about potentially volunteering and what would, you, what would volunteering with the commission look like? And they came up with this proposal for us. Mm. So that's where it came from. And it was their idea to bring in additional PhD students to help out. So I thought that was exciting. But just to answer your question, Amanda, that's where it came from. Find my hand. Lee? Yeah, I can't get my hand in my window. Oh, there you go. I see your hand. Go ahead, Lee. Um, yeah, um, I, when I was uh, at the board at Osher, actually, we used one of these teams, and they did an absolutely wonderful job and came up with a lot of um, things that we hadn't even thought of. Uh, and I'm glad that, that we're getting the time to do this, because I was really wondering, until Janet asked the question, how we ever make a decision on something with no information. And so I that we should have gotten some of it beforehand, but I'm glad we're giving it time to do that so that we can um, try to avoid any mm -hmm. problems that could come up afterwards. So, but it sounds really exciting, Morgan and Jesse. Mm -hmm. really looking forward to hearing more about it. Yeah, and so, oh, go ahead, Morgan. Sorry. Oh, I was going to just say I know that we're over like two minutes, but I do want to say <laughs> that. Um, um, it is embedded in kind of this amazing document that Jesse created about our order of operations that we would be working hand in hand with the gender analysis committee because you can't have one without the other, right? I mean, this is, it's a one-sided yep. coin of progress. Yep. Yes, yep. Malik, I will be in your inbox. <laughs> to <stretch laughs> it oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> if I could jump in on second rounds here as well um, to to speak to both what Sharon and, and Morgan are saying, we should touch base, but to also remind commissioners that there's no money changing hands, the uh -huh. data is publicly available. Um, so if we are to just, we could possibly just be inspiring independent research on these topics, and that doesn't require an MOU from the city nor does it need to actually be the official work of the Gender Equity Commission um, in this instance or maybe future instances, right? That we are raising these questions publicly and that researchers are responding with interest. Um, here, there's really actually, not, we're, we're not supplying resources if we're not kind of um, giving even information or access to departments. So you know, this, this, this information could happen even if we never exist. I mean, this kind of research could happen even if we never existed. So it doesn't, you know, if we, if we want to move forward with it as a gender equity commissions, MOU, um, that's one option, but it really kind of could happen without us. Because again, this data, like you, we could pull up, if I, I could give me, you know, in a minute, I could pull it up on the Western Pennsylvania Regional Data Center website as open data. Um, and share it with you on your screen and you could see the data sets yourself. Um, anyone can download them because the, because the city a number of years ago decided to do this and put data from city departments out there for the world for this exact reason. And so I know that they were looking at that, but I know they also need to get an MOU um, in place in order to pass their IRB. So they, they will have to go through this process. Um, and I think they were hoping to meet with some of the city departments or to talk uh, with some folks. So not, probably not entirely just what's available publicly, but that's why, I would hope, yeah. why there's a process in place and why a new would need to, uh, with our approval, speak with the city. So it sounds like, and I need to move us on because we uh, have a short meeting today. Rick, I see you waving your hand, but uh, I'm, I'm moving us on unless you've got something you, that we need to hear for this discussion. Yeah, it, 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 it's very quick. Yep. Um, 
you know, what Councilperson Gross just mentioned is right on point. Um, we do need to look at specific data sets and we need to make decisions on what data sets we're going to analyze. Um, yes, the WPRDC has 300 something data sets, but which one specific do we need as a gender equity commission to analyze and break down um, to, to kind of roll back into the analysis as well as the equity action uh, committee that I, I'm on with, with Morgan as chair. And um, one request I was just kind of thinking, would it be possible that Morgan can be the representative on, on that team as well to be able to interface with the research team uh, kind of moving forward with this and she could kind of bounce off what's going on in process and, and, and so forth. Um, those are just the, the two ideas that I just thought off the top of my head. One, we did discuss about the data uh, conversation in our, in our session. Um, um, last month, but um, I guess a couple weeks ago, but the still, I mean, when we meet with them, we have to kind of really determine what makes sense. Sorry for trying to, I'm trying to be quick. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> that's exactly right why Morgan started us off by saying we have to choose the departments. Um, so we actually have a motion on the table, just back to our parliamentary procedure here. We have an open motion. We're in discussion right now. Um, Morgan, do you want to rescind yeah, let's rescind it so that way everyone has the chance to digest this information um, and we can come back to it later. Okay, so Morgan is withdrawing that motion um, and we have some next steps then um, for all of us to have some additional information and additional discussion next month. Okay, we are moving on then unless there's any other questions for Morgan. Thank you so much, Morgan, for the work of that committee. To the Gender Analysis Committee, Sharon, the floor is yours. Jesse, did you call on me? Yes. yes. The floor is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask um, uh, maybe Lee and Anu if you all could also jump in here. Um, as you know, I was out um, and uh, uh, I don't need to go into why they had a family emergency, but I've, I've been out and uh, just kind of on the peripheral, but uh, if uh, Anu and Lee and Jesse, if you all would have anything to, to share, that would be, that would be great. And I can just start with um, a, a request um, to all of you. So the deadline for RFP uh, for community-based uh, research uh, on gender equity in Pittsburgh is what it's called. And I, I, I don't control this, but if, if you go to Beacon, which is the city's official procurement website, um, I can't link to that RFP, unfortunately. You have to go and search for gender equity um, or by the number, which was in the newsletter and in my executive director report. Please, 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 please share that RFP widely, all your social networks, anyone you can think of. Um, and I sent emails about the RFP and also an invitation that the committee um, crafted uh, inviting three community members. And that, that number of three is just based on not having a selection committee who chooses the vendor that is too big. <laughs> um, that's the only reason I was three, but there is a form, it's in my executive director report, the link to it. We've only had two people so far fill it out. Um, it's only been about a week, but we want as many people as possible who are interested, uh, as you were all talking about, having more community engagement on committees. This is a very clear systematic way that this committee uh, is trying to do that. Um, and I sent emails to both the uh, community members who met with us last fall. And then if you remember the public letter that was written after the PIGR report by a group of black women and femmes in public health, I sent a specific invitation to them um, separately saying thank you for, for holding us accountable, helping to hold us accountable to ourselves. Um, and we really wanna make sure that you have an opportunity to participate. But I, I need all of your help, I put it out on social Social media. I've asked the mayor's office to put out on social media. It was in the newsletter, um, and I've sent directed emails. But uh, you know, when we talk about reaching out to the communities, each of you is a member of 
communities locally, um, and so I'd love the help. So November 25th is the RFP deadline. By November 20th, we'd like community members, that's this Friday, to tell us if they would like to participate with us. Um, and then we have a, a lot of work, and I know you all do lots of work, but um, to get your input on selecting the vendors with me. Uh, and I think that's it for my pieces, um, Lee and other members, if I forgot anything. Yeah, no, thank you. The, the committee really did a lot of work putting together an engagement plan. So this is a really good example of a community engagement mm -hmm. plan, and Anu was the one who had to carry out a bunch of the pieces, which he just described, so thank you, Anu. Um, and I, the last thing Anu just said was, I think you were also opening the invitation up. I wanted to be sure that all of you knew that you were invited if you wanted to read proposals. You'd be more than welcome to join the committee and help us. Yeah. With um, so please, yes, Sharon's going like this. So please, yeah. maybe let Sharon know if you're interested um, yeah. in helping with that. And Lee? Yeah, we're, we're trying to get people from different communities, and not all from one community. So please keep that in mind. You might think about people that are outside a lot of community members we've worked with. But um, so we wanted to have some representation beginning there, right. if all possible. So Some uh, really great discussion on that committee, too, about um, how to put the form together, what questions we were asking. There was mm -hmm. a robust mm -hmm. discussion under sharing mm -hmm. leadership. Uh, really appreciate that intentional work. Uh, I am rushing us along. You'll notice. That's that. great. No, I'm 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 good. Thank you. Is there any, is there anything else, Lee? Are you good, Jesse? Any other anything questions? Else? No, you're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Yeah. Please do reach out to Sharon if you can help out on the committee or is in helping out or send folks their way. Yeah. Um, our workforce equity committee, Sarah, you're up. Yes. So as folks know, we have some exciting news. Um, tomorrow, we will be making the official announcement to launch the uh, AAUW WorkSmart portion of our three-pronged um, workforce equity initiative. And I know it's, it's, it will be starting roughly at 3.30. We're going to have some fantastic speakers, um, including the mayor, um, partner for work, and um, Adagio Health will be there with us, uh, as well as folks from AUW National. Of course, we'll all be virtually gathered. But <laughs> um, and uh, I know it will be recorded and made available through the City Channel platform. Uh, information will be forthcoming for how folks will be able to access. So even if you can't watch it live, um, there will be a way to watch it subsequently uh, and, and, and gain the content. Um, as I mentioned, the focus will be on the AEW WorkSmart training and there will be a virtual training link available through our new Workforce Equity page. Thank you, Anu, for building our page. Um, more information will be coming on that page. Um, and so the important thing to note too is that this is the first step um, as folks are aware, we've also been working on a Pittsburgh Workforce Equity Council, uh, which we envision as a strategic alliance between government, uh, business, community-based organizations, human rights activists, and educators, um, as well as concerned citizens in general. And we will be working to build that in early 2021 and announcing it with the launch of our also forthcoming workforce equity commitment in which, and that's, um, as, as Jesse reminds us, it's so important to focus on the systems level change. And that portion of this initiative is really geared around engaging employers um, to make structural changes. So this is all forthcoming, but tomorrow at 3.30, we will be announcing the launch of the uh, WorkSmart training which will be provided free to all residents of the city of Pittsburgh. So we definitely encourage you if we can get the information out, please tune in. If we can't get it out to you in time to tune in live, it will be available via recording. Um, and of course, I open it up to Anu and my colleagues on the committee if you have anything to add. Janet's saying three, Sarah. It is three. Three. It oh no, three Janet. Lot. Thank you, Janet. <laughs> three. Janet's our timekeeper. Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> And you can watch it live. I found out the information. You can watch it. So it is three. Both Janet and I were like, no, it's three o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just um, going on. You can, 
it will be live streamed on Facebook, uh, which is facebook.com, the city of Pittsburgh page. And then as uh, Sarah mentioned, the recording will be on the YouTube uh, city channel. And if any of you want a link, let me know. I don't want to bombard you. I try very hard not to bombard you with emails. So people give me a thumbs up if you want me to send you links to those two sites. Okay. A couple of people, so I'll do it for all of you. The rest of you can deal. <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> for everyone. Thank you, thank you. And 3 p.m. tomorrow, I'm super Three. excited. Okay. These committees Three. are awesome. Gender Three. analysis and workforce equity. You all rock. That's great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Oh, Amanda, you had something to add? I was mouthing very quick, Jesse. Um, I just, yeah, I just want to say, um, I do, I do want to take a couple of precious seconds that we have left just to say um, this has been a long journey <laughs> and it's happening and I could not be more grateful to the commission for their support and to, um, you know, Jesse's leadership and news leadership and assistance and um, to uh, Janet and Sarah, um, you know, this was a, an idea that was brought when the mayor asked us to bring ideas from other cities. And this has been a long time coming and a long journey. And um, I am excited for it to finally be officially voted on <laughs> and moved forward. Um, and I am excited for, for something that we're bringing uh, to the city to, to highlight a very real global problem, which is um, gender, um, the gender wage gap. And um, yeah, I just, I'm sorry, but I, I just, you know, I think it's important just to take a few seconds just to think about how, what a big deal this is for our commission. This is a huge deal. This was a huge lift. Um, so I just wanted to bring that to the space and just give my gratitude to everyone here for their support in this. Um, two years is a long time to work on something like this um, and it's finally happening. So I just, um, I'm grateful and I'm excited. And um, yeah, thank you everyone. This is amazing. Just the beginning. There's more aspects of this workforce <laughs> equity committee. So we're celebrating this, but there's more to follow. Uh -huh. and Good you job. If we were all together tomorrow at this press conference, we'd all be going out for a drink and celebrating, you know, with a beverage of your choice. It would have, so you're absolutely right. Worthy of celebrating. <laughs> and sanitizer. <laughs> <laughs> with hand sanitizer. Here's to you. That's great. Oh, I have goose pimples. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. It's a big deal. Thank you. That's thank you, Sarah, Amanda, and Janet, for all of um, that effort and congratulations. It'll be very exciting tomorrow. And just one quick thing, my uh, people that I know in AAUW have been getting to me all week saying, hey, what is this thing that you're involved in with AAUW? So they're watching us now, too. So. Oh, good. All right, we've got to move on to our, our policy piece. Poor Jordan's been waiting and waiting and waiting so patiently. Thank you. Uh, Jordan, Hi, everyone. Is Hi. Happy oh. November. Um, I honestly don't have anything too big this month, um, even though a lot has been happening and there's a lot of work being done. Um, my two main things, one, I know Chief Gillen mentioned this during the last meeting, we are still working on that piece of legislation to change the language in the city code. Um, that is still in the works. We did not forget about that by any means. Um, and then also, Anu mentioned this earlier, but the appointments project press conference was today. Um, so that's, again, something that we've been talking about since I started my job. Um, and, and we're really, really excited to partner with um, the Women's Institute, Gwen's Girls, and the EWC. Um, I think they're going to serve as really phenomenal community partners. They've done this work for years. And so um, it was a really, really excellent press conference. United We Sounds very excited as well. So. Um, as Anu mentioned, the trainings will be free on December 7th and the 13th. Um, and I believe United We has information up on their website about the appointments project already, if you know anyone that's interested. So feel free to pass that along to anyone um, that is not currently in contact with the community partners, but might be interested in serving on a board authority or commission. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much it um, coming from our office for right now. But, if anybody has any questions, um, 
feel free to ask me anything, so. Thank you, Jordan, for that work. You're welcome. Super important. Okay. Any other questions for Jordan, comments? We're gonna get more diversity on these boards, authorities, and commissions, which is super exciting work. And maybe Morgan will no longer be the youngest member of a commission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether to clap or <laughs> I can't be alone. Let, yeah, let's make sure you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Really important, ongoing work, right? That's not, that's not new work. There's been some really important work already happening around this. This is going to formalize a lot of what's been happening. So thank you, Jordan, for that. Um, we have one request for an advocacy um, item, and then we can take any new requests from the floor. Lee has something that has been shared with us around 16 days of action. Lee? Yeah, the 16 days of activism, it's against gender-based violence against women. It's an international campaign coming out of the UN, particularly UN women, um, to emphasize that gender-based violence against women is a violation of human rights. It starts on the 25th, which, the, which is the International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, and ends on December 10th, Human Rights Day. And I um, am asking uh, that we uh, request a proclamation proclamation from the mayor and from city council supporting this movement on the behalf of the uh, Gender Equity Commission and in partnership with the Zonta Club of Pittsburgh. Questions, thoughts for me? Yeah. Well, this one's an obvious fit, right? Right. Comes it's right. an absolute obvious fit. Um, uh, Zonta Club of Fifth Circuit. Zonta is a 100 year old um, service and advocacy organization. Um, and we've been working with 16 Days of Activism for about 15 years now. And it just looked perfect in terms of, and we, we help support um, uh, the Gender Equity Commission coming to being. Um, and it seemed like a good time now with uh, both of our organizations here that this is something very specific that we can do that indicates the work we're doing um, to end violence against women and to support people who have been caught in that process uh, locally, nationally, and also internationally. And so I would ask you to support that request um, since it fits into all of the categories that, that we are looking at and working with women and working through the UN and the SDGs. So we're being asked for a, a vote of support for a proclamation is what Lee is asking for. Um, right. Until we move to Martha's rules where we could do our thumbs up, we'll need to do the <laughs> motion. So Lee uh, has presented us, do you wanna make that as a motion? Lee? I will make it a motion that <laughs> we request proclamations from the city, city council and the mayor's office. Anybody would like to second that motion? Allison is seconding. Uh, any further questions or discussion? All in favor of requesting a proclamation? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Or abstained? Mike, was that an opposed? Or you were? I heard <laughs> you. I think it was an aye. I think it was a delayed aye. Oh, it was Don't blame that on me. <laughs> <laughs> this is hard over zoom gang i'm sorry it is, it You're is. doing a great job everybody is really hanging in there uh, with great appreciation okay that motion carries lee um thank you for bringing that are there any other advocacy requests or new business from can i ask a can i ask a follow-up question about that so sure. i was just um i don't know that i have anything written up um yeah i sent it to you again today okay Okay, um, I will look for that because I because uh, I'll work with Jordan and the policy team on the mayor's office end, but there's a separate process for city council. Yeah, I'm going to send it to Deb. Okay, so I'll take care of the mayor's office part and I'll look for that email. Great, thank you. Great, thank you very much. And be, since I have the floor for a minute, what I wanted to uh, let people know is that I will be uh, resigning from the commission as of the end of the year. The I have a seat that's um, the Pittsburgh Presido group. The, they're we're the ones who um, developed this, 
and I'm requesting, uh, and that has to be filled by somebody from our group uh, at all times. So I'm requesting that the mayor will appoint Marsha Bandes. She is, uh, has worked with us on our um, gender analysis over the years, and she is the one who's really responsible for um, the um, Pittsburgh Presida uh, getting developed and for really helping us pass this in um, really about a year from the beginning of when we started on this until the ordinance was passed. It was just about a year, which was the quickest in this country so far. And so she will be an asset to all of you. And I, you'll really appreciate uh, working with her. And she, whenever she can be here, sits in on our meetings live or, um, you know, over Zoom. And so she's really up on all of the kinds of things we're talking about all the time. So um, thank you for uh, um, supporting her and continuing, um, you know, one of our people on this who brings a history to the commission that uh, is why we have them on the commission at all times. So thank you. Well, Lee, thank you for letting us know. Um, certainly going to be sad to see you go. You've been one of the founding members of what I guess we've been calling founding mothers of the Gender Equity Commission. Um, we so appreciate your time, your talents, your work, and your dedication to this commission. Again, I wish we were all meeting in person because we've got yeah. a lot of, you know, drinks and things that we need to be cheering. Drinks and, and, drinks and, and hugs, right? Hugs. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. With I appreciate that and I really, um, really enjoyed working with all of you as we were putting this together and with our new members who have come in bringing their own energy and um, uh, information with them. So it's been a delightful process and I hope to stay connected with you all. So Lee will be with us next month. I will. You don't actually get to say goodbye this month. Next no. month you can say goodbye, not yet. Okay, so do you. Get rid of COVID for a week and then we'll yeah. do it. <laughs> Well, then we need quarantine and the rest of it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So thank you, thank you again, Lee. You're welcome. Thank you we all. We are just about at time. Anu, were there any comments or feedback or questions that we received during our live streaming? I know you are doing about 100 things at once. I'm looking at your email. Um, yes, I'm looking. No, it's not about our meeting. Okay. <laughs> I just got an email like five seconds ago, but no, it's not about a uh, public comment. Uh, I think I don't have anything right now. Thank you. All right. Thanks for checking. Uh, yeah, this is, again, an example of how we're all trying to be creative and innovative with our meetings. We are meeting next month on uh, December 15th, 2020 at 2.30. We will have a working session and at 3.30 we will have a public live, uh, presumably live streamed, uh, as well as recorded public session. So we will meet back again on December 15th. And that is the conclusion of our meeting. If I can have a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you, Janet. We are adjourned. Yeah.